Okay, so in this video clip, we're going to run through some visualization tools for uh, putting together uh, some analysis in relation to the Financial Times uh, data set for bank fines over the period 2007, 2015. Now, as before, this legacy data set is downloadable using this link here and um okay so we just download again just for completeness um and then i go back to uh my content folder in google colab which is a jupyter notebook and i go into i find the content folder that's the directory for reading data so we upload here to the content folder the data set that just came down okay and then we open and then i'll go back to the table of contents and i come down to the data setup and i read in the data and i have to be a little bit careful that the name here is consistent with the pandas read underscore csv command so we'll just make a small change here rename file and that'll execute and just to make sure it's there we'll take a look at the data it's all good uh, and then back to the table of contents and i'll come down to uh, my visualization tools Okay, so um, the the motivation here is in terms of setting out the series of steps the plan to go through is, is really to deploy pandas uh, to produce uh, pivot tables and then from the pivot tables uh, try to understand better using stacked bar charts um, what's in those pivot tables. So we, we want to look at the behavior of the fines, the patterns that are in the fines, uh, the, the, the pattern in terms of the timeline and the pattern in terms of how fines are applied on uh, leading in, uh, commercial banks in the US uh, by regulators. Okay, so um, a really nice uh, visualization tool is Matplotlib and Plotly. And I'm going to use both of those here. So first of all, I'm going to try generate um, using our data of 250 rows of data, if I remember correctly, with seven columns. And we're looking here basically at the largest fines. So Bank of America, BNP Paribas, and the uh, as it turns out, this is not the total cumulative fines. If we go back to the violation tracker, um, the for the period 2000 to 2023, uh, the total amount of fines uh, for Bank of America was, uh, the largest fine for, was on Bank of America, uh, 16 billion, then JP Morgan. But if we take a cumulative figure, so these are particular instances of fines with particular dates, but the cumulative figures, just a little bit below here, the cumulative figures uh, are these ones here. So the 87 billion uh, on Bank of America, they took the biggest hit over the period 2000, 2023, and then JP Morgan, 38,000, uh, 38, billion, UBS 29 billion, Wells Fargo 27. So we might put this to one side. Uh, one way of doing that is just uh, keep it here. And then I'm going to go back down to our visualization just to compare like against like. Okay, and when we run our report here, outputting our data. It's fairly clear that the figures that we have here are the, the leading, the, the, the top fine 
for each institution. So it's not cumulative figures. That 16 billion corresponds to Bank of America. And, you know, the, the cumulative figure for using the violation tracker was 87 billion. Okay, so we might run this uh, report, just go for the top 20 fines that applied to banks. And again, you can see Bank of America took, took the biggest hit, then BNP Paribas, Citigroup, the biggest individual fine, then JP Morgan. Um, might be more useful to create a pivot table where we break down. So the idea here of the pivot table is that we can do a two-dimensional table where we look at the intersection and we can break down between different factors. So we're going to look here at, there were seven reasons, seven categories of fines that the FTSE, the, the Financial Times data set tracked. And then we have each of the individual banks Okay, so in the output that we have here, with Bank of America, JP Morgan, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, and we're looking, we have the totals. So the the FT data that we just uploaded, the the, the fines that we've um, that we're tracking here using the uh, the data, right for um, so when we run our pivot table here, we're looking at the uh, data and we've organized our data so that we're looking at the fines recorded by the Financial Times uh, data set for 2007 up to 2015. Violation tracker is a little bit um, covers a much longer period. And when we look at Bank of America's fines here from the Financial Times, the total is 57 uh, billion. Okay, for JP Morgan, over the period 2007, 2015, 32 billion. Next up, Citigroup, over the period 2007, 2015, 14 billion. Now the figures here are for the longer, this is for the violation tracker. And you can see uh, additional fines were imposed since 2015. So it's useful to compare and contrast over time what's been the impact of fines. One of the trends we'll see later when we're running our pivot tables is that the, the, the period with the more substantial fines was during 2014, 2015 with the Financial Times uh, uh, data set. Okay, so um, okay, so that uh, that's a useful uh, starting point. Let's um, let's see if we can remove this. Uh, okay, let's take it down. Okay, so um, if we go back to our pivot table here for a moment, um, the first pivot table, uh, and then from the pivot table, try to create a visualization. Uh, the data set that we created originally is very simply called data. We uploaded the Financial Times uh, data set and we created an object called data. To run the pivot table, we take our data set, the 250 um, finds, um, and uh, we index the pivot table using bank. And then we, in the columns here, we set out the reason. There was seven reasons or seven categories that the Financial Times uh, categorized uh, each fine as being. So it's one of seven. And then very importantly, we estimate uh, the total fines for each individual bank. So for instance, here, Bank of America had uh, 14 billion imposed for issues related to foreclosure, 1.5 billion issues related to lending, consumer practice, 
842 million related to market manipulation, mergers and acquisitions 150 million, mortgage backed securities 26 billion, and mortgage repurchases uh, 14 billion. So, uh, and nothing for our sanctions. Total fines 57 billion. Likewise, JP Morgan. Now you can see in the area for closures, JP Morgan less affected. Uh, less affected across each category, in fact, except market manipulation, JP Morgan is more, and so on. If we um, wanted the full suite of institutions, you can see here we would have the 61 banks, and some of the banks, the smaller banks, when you categorize in terms of the lower fines, they're they're uh, across the board, right? Uh, it's small in total and small across the board. So, for just for efficiency, we might go with the top twenty banks. In terms of the output here, and we so the pivot table we cr create is actually just relating to the top 20 banks, okay? So the pivot table, it's important that we see that if we're just looking out of the 31 banks, we're going with the top 20. And then to visualize this, right? And what it means we create a stacked bar chart uh, with matplotlib. Uh, matplotlib is great when you're writing articles and it goes into sort of static uh, setup. Uh, plotly, um, more useful when you're trying to do sort of interactive, uh, introduce interactive capability. So the reader might dynamically try to read what's going on in the graph and position the mouse and toggle over. Okay, so let's just run this. Uh, uh, visualization. So we're going to take the pivot table um, and we dropped uh, total fines, and then on the x-axis, it's the top 20 banks, no more. Um, and then on the horizontal vertical axis, the amount in terms of fines, but importantly, then we break down the uh, each category. So it's color-coded, so you can see here, um, the line share of fines, in fact, went on mortgage-backed securities. And I'd say closely followed then by foreclosures for Bank of America. And then um, mortgage repurchases, probably in third place. And um, the big variation here might be for BNP Paribas, which took, you know, it's for the Financial Times data set they just had, there was just that big fine related to uh, sanctions, money laundering, tax evasion. Um, and the international banks seem to get hit very hard by sanctions, money laundering, tax evasion. And the Swiss banks had issues related to bank secrecy and there was legacy issues. Uh, HSBC as well, also in, an international bank, um, operates in the US, but headquartered, uh, I think, in London, but also has uh, significant Asian interests. It's sort of pan-Asian, UK, um, international bank. Um, and those banks, those international banks, tend to have um, a predisposition to taking uh, fines for breaches in sanctions, money laundering, and, and tax evasion. Okay, now uh, we we might like to break the fines down by year. So sort of interesting to see by category. Um, if we perform the same analysis, but instead of running by um, the reason, if we run the same type of, create the same type of pivot table again, but set out a two-dimensional table where on the horizontal, vertical, horizontal axis, 
we set out the dates. So for each year, how much fines apply, were applied in each year, again, for the same banks. And we run it for the uh, entire banks, all 61 commercial banks. We can see that there's a noticeable pattern of the fines. Actually, it's uh, the biggest fines here, 2013, 2014. For Bank of America, JP Morgan, 2013, 2014, so 12, 13, 14, where the kind of, if we do a heat map, we'd find they were the, uh, where the biggest hits were applied. Wells Fargo, uh, 12, uh, 13, so 2012, 2013. Let's just do it for the top 20 banks and again it would appear 2013-14 were the years where the fines seem to cluster okay so the financial crisis kicked off in 2007 and you had layman's uh you had bear stearns um and then you had the subprime crisis. Uh, the reaction to that came with a little bit of a lag, but the fines seemed to have culminated. The biggest fines seemed to have culminated 2013-14. Okay. Now, um, again, when we construct uh, tables like this, um, might be useful to formulate hypotheses in terms of um, are there questions that emerge here in terms of similarities, the similarities in terms of how defines were applied. Uh, we could conjecture one hypothesis that uh, some foreign banks like BNP Paribas and maybe Deutsche Bank, uh, you know, had different treatments. If we examine, uh, let's say if we, were to home, hone in specifically on Deutsche Bank and want to look at the fines that were applied, uh, we could, uh, again, this is just a, in this case, not a pivot table, it's just a pandas table. So we're just filtering the rows according to Deutsche Bank. And if we look at the top 10 fines imposed, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So just eight fines, in fact. And then the fines here, um, 1.9 billion in 2013, 800 million 2015, 775 million 2015. So in fact, many of the big fines came a little bit later for Deutsche Bank. And if we take those uh, fines and add all together, the total Number amount of fines imposed on Deutsche Bank um, over the period 2007 to 2015 was 4.5 billion. Now, that looks quite severe, but obviously not as severe as what was imposed on uh, Bank of America. Uh, but then also Deutsche Bank, UBS, Credit Suisse, um, BNP Paribas wouldn't have benefited from the TARP money and um, much of the financial support that uh, foreign governments made available to their commercial banks like Deutsche Bank, the Swiss banks, uh, uh, what we often note is that the um, amount of supports given to foreign banks by their respective governments much of that uh, funding was um, taken up by the fines imposed by U.S. regulators. Um, okay. So again, I leave. The, I've written some analysis here, and people can take a look. Again, this is just by way in terms of motivating maybe research questions, um, and you know, figuring out ways in which we might progress um, the, 
research here or to try and understand a little bit more the kind of regulatory context um, and landscape and also um, uh, s some of these pivot tables are intended to just drive a little bit the curiosity of readers. Um, if we look at the cumulative, we wanted to just uh, build a picture in terms of the cumulative fines imposed uh, by different regulators on banks. We use this matplotlib um, library. Okay, so we're we're generating the pivot table. We're going to uh, produce uh, totals. So we create this object totals, and then we're going to sort by totals. Um, and then we run um, on our x-axis, we're going to have each individual bank and on, on our y-axis, the amount cumulatively imposed on financial institutions. So that's for the full gamut, the full 61 banks. And you can see Bank of America, again, dwarfs, uh, JP Morgan, dwarfs, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo, and then it tapers off completely. So by bank 20 or so, the um, amount of fines is very small indeed compared to uh, Bank of America, G, compared to the top 10 or 15. Um, we could do a, a stack bar chart and just go with the top 20 banks and break it down by year. And you can see when we look here, 2014 and 2013. So it would appear here that the big fines actually occurred in the 2013-14 period. 2014, 2000, so the gray and the yellow. In the case of Wells Fargo, they took some big fines in 2012 as well. BNP Paribas, that significant fine came in 2014. Deutsche Bank, um, 2013 and, the, and 2015. And again, if we did the same, but using Plotly, Right, so take all the banks. Now, what's nice about Plotly? Okay, so I might just um, zoom out a little bit here. So what, what's nice about Plotly is it's interactive. So once you hover the mouse over a particular area, we get the explanation. Now, the fines, in fact, for Bank of America, you can see the scale of fines and post and Bank of America compared to its peers. Very, very substantial. Um, okay, let's zoom in. Now we can stack uh, stacking the bar chart by year. And uh, here we're going to use Plotly. And again, we get a nice graph. Now I'm doing it for the top 20 banks, okay, so the top 20 fine institutions, the fines are broke down by year. And you can see uh, again, that the biggest fines are in 2013, 2014, 2013, 2012, 2014, 2012, 2013, BMP Paribas, biggest fine was in 2014. So the years that possibly saw the heaviest fines were, it would appear just visually here of tracking using Plotly, 2014, 2013. Now they might be worth notice, mentioning that we create the pivot table for us. And then from the pivot table, we create this stack bar chart. And again, the visualizations offered on the FTSE, something similar. 
right? So they have these very nice tools that I'm trying to emulate in terms of stack bar charts. We're looking at the amount of fines over the different periods, 2000. Now I'm doing it um, by institution and then break it down by year. Okay, so again, uh, worthwhile going back to the original article here, which I left the link to in the collab, and I'll include the collab uh, in on, underneath the video clip. Okay, so a little bit of analysis. I'll leave that there, and you can go back and read. Um, and then we could organize this a little bit differently. And the total fines by regulators, and we do it by year. Now, the... The with plotly, you can see the the total amount imposed in two thousand nine, two thousand ten, eleven, relatively small. Two thousand seven, not much, but then a big jump up. Two thousand twelve, two thousand thirteen, two thousand fourteen, and then the it seems to taper off again. The total amounts, and then we we're breaking this down by the Department of Justice. Uh, the Department of Housing, Federal Ho Federal Housing Agency. And you can see here, not much activity, but then a very, you know, seismic jump. So here, the regulators, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, Fannie Mae, and so on. Okay, so again, it gives a nice overview this visualization gives us a sense of the timeline and how regulators responded and the if you like the lag between the actual financial crisis the on um, of uh, abuses and violations in the banking sector and then the machinery uh the investigations and so on that had to come into operation before fines were applied. Okay, now if we uh, break down the previously, we had looked at the fines per bank. Here in this pivot table that we've created, the, the index is no longer the bank, the commercial bank. It's now the regulator. So what's changed in terms of the creation of the pivot table on the vertical, on the index, we're tracking regulator. And on the, across the horizontal, we're looking at the, the year and the cumulative fines in a given year. So that object that we create here, if we were to, okay, we can visualize, visualize it like this. But to eyeball the actual pivot table that's created using that command, we have here the year defines cumulatively that were applied for each year. The totals, the total amount of fines spanning 2007, 2015 is 161 billion. And leading the pack here is the Department of Justice and just like what we had mentioned before, uh, a very slow start in terms of applying the fines. And then 2012, 13, 14, there's a escalation and a little bit of a hump tapering off 2014, 2015. So the epicenter here for the Department of Justice was 2013, Department of Housing and Urban Affairs, was quicker out of the stalls. Uh, Federal Housing Agency, the biggest fines were 2013. Um, Fannie Mae would appear 2013. Office of the Controller of the Currency, biggest fines were in 2013. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, possibly 2014 and so on. So you can track 
the cumulative figures here, both on the vertic on the horizontal and on the vertical. And the biggest amount of fines, 52 billion and 57 billion for 2013, 2014. Okay, so that's a that gives you a sense of the dynamic in operation, how the fines, fining regime kicked off, and where the clustering is, uh, largely 2012, 13, 14. Okay, now we can do box plots, where, which are a nice way to convey the spread. So with the interquartile range, and then the outliers, and... Looks like uh, the mortgage-backed securities uh, don't have such a high median figure here compared to the others, but there are some standout um, cases. Um, an advantage of using Plotly here to run the same graph, basically bar chart for uh, um, a box plot where we break down by category defines. And then if we look at the outliers, we can actually track them. So we know that the biggest fine here was uh, on Bank of America. It was on mortgage-backed securities. Um, and it was 16 billion. And the next one here, uh, 9 billion, 7 billion, 6 billion, and 4 billion. So um, now we can provide... Uh, a lot more detail, we can make our plotly graph a lot more interactive, where we bring in a lot more detail. So for instance, if we come back again, we we can identify the, the, the level of the fine in question. Um, So the outliers, and so this, uh, this instance we have foreclosures. And then if we compare like against, like uh, for mortgage-backed securities, the biggest fine that was imposed was on mortgage-backed securities. So when I highlight this point here for mortgage-backed securities, we can see the fine was for 16 billion. It was imposed in Bank of America. The regulation question was the Department of Justice and the description settlement to resolve allegation of mis-selling. Bank, sec bank securities, the pact involves several agencies, including Fed the Federal, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and state attorney generals. Okay, so uh, a lot more detail. Now we can hover over a lot of those dots uh, now, when you get down here into the cluster, they're just randomly uh, generated, so you get a sense of the spread, right? So the idea here, by having the box plot, right, um, the detailed that's provided is random detailed with the dots here, and we do have outliers, but we're also getting a sort of random distribution so that we get a sense of not just the spread but the preponderance where are these dots uh, clustered okay um how to read the graph i'll leave that there for uh, you to read afterwards uh, fines by reason pivoted for financial institutions Okay, so we're uh, again we're looking at the uh, this sentence, the different banks, and then the different categories of fines, and then the totals. And we can pivot for the top twenty. Just go with the top twenty. And uh, again, we can see um, Bank of America taking the biggest hit here. Uh, Again, interesting to set up the bar, the uh, stacked bar chart to visualize that. And we have the totals here produced and then uh, Bank of America. And again, it's fairly clear Bank of America takes the, the lion's share of the 
um, of the fines. Okay, now um, the rest, I think I'll just leave uh, in the collab and let people maybe track themselves, but you can see how powerful Plotly is in terms of you know generating graphs, creating interactive detail. Uh, if you're trying to produce automated report where you try to re retrieve intelligence uh, in a sort of convenient, timely fashion, um, and you want it to be user-friendly, readable, Plotly uh, provides us with a sort of a nice interactive experience. And so even if you're relatively new to a data set, if you're trying to parse through, you can quickly pick out the standout finds, which categories, which um, regulators were most active and associated with the biggest finds uh, and develop your analysis. Um, in that fashion, right? So again, uh, all these uh, pie charts and so on can be made interactive. Um, and I think I'll leave the rest here just for uh, viewers to go through themselves to get a sense of how you can create an automated report where you can set out uh, commands that can be recycled as your your data is updated um, and becomes more current, right? Uh, and you can provide a relatively standard type of analysis. Okay, let's leave it there. Colab will be found underneath uh, the video clip uh, on YouTube.